Hello friends, I'm in this forum. My name is Lauren and today I have for you a little reading um, for this full moon in Aquarius as well as some updates about the work that I do. So if you've never been here before, hi, hello, my name is Lauren. I have a Patreon. I have an, um, a YouTube channel, Instagram, where I share art, spirituality, and sometimes toxic spirituality and um, things pertaining to that. So for today, I wanted to just give a few updates specifically for Patreon support supporters and subscribers, that things over on Patreon will be shifting ever so slightly. And by slightly, I mean things are not going to be as exclusive. Something that has just been sitting with me since actually the beginning of Patreon has been the connection between artists <laughs> and um, others, right? One second. So since putting together my Patreon a little over two years ago, um, I have had a big tug of war within myself and my ability to provide helpful information while still supporting myself. So a lot of that came down to I started my Patreon around the same time I also found myself self in a self-help spiritual cult, which of course I have deep dives on that on this channel. Um, and that has been really interesting since leaving to try and de-stickify certain things within my own practice, how I support people, um, and my personal mission, right? And with the Aquarian full moon energy, it's actually a really great time, I think, that and um, the Venus retrograde, which I'll make a deep dive into Venus retrograde as well. Venus retrograde is an interesting time, I feel, to look at your value system and evaluate what works and what doesn't. And there's certain things that just don't fit within my values. Yes, I believe that all artists should be well compensated for their work, but I also believe that as someone who wants to share artist ritual with people and wants to be a supportive teacher who is not working exclusively through content moderation or content creation oh, uh, to share magic with people, that's not my number one source of income. Um, I think I can move away from certain practices that honestly feel like they've gotten in the way of my personal um, my personal mission as an artist, art teacher, art ritual facilitator, and just overall witchy person. And this is not supposed to say anything about anybody else's practice or anybody else's relationship to that. It's strictly my own because that's the house I live in, my own shit. So with that said, stuff on Patreon is not going to be exclusive exclusive. It's more going to be an opportunity for you to um, support me if you feel so called. But it's not going to be the exclusive place to which all my content lives or certain content lives. For years now, since 2019, even longer than Patreon, I've been on here sharing um, a little bit of art as ritual, but mostly um, work about tarot and astrology. And that's definitely going to still keep up. But I, if you're a YouTube subscriber but not a Patreon supporter, you might have seen a lot of new content kind of pop out of nowhere. And that has been living on my YouTube channel for a while. That is video recordings from over on Patreon. 
Again, I just want this information. I just want this magic, this medicine as our as ritual to be more um, available. And I think that this is more in alignment with my mission um, and also more alignment with my own Venetian vibes. I have a Venus in Aquarius. Um, and I feel like this is kind of hitting to that level of like, I just want to share. I, do, I just want to share. I don't want to be consumed with, will this work? Won't it work? Like, I just want to share. That's why I do this. That's why I do anything, honestly. And so now that the monetization is not my priority as it was and as it was instructed to me because I was spending hundreds of dollars on a coaching program, yay. <laughs> I think it's okay to just make a lot more of this content free. Um, if you want to support me, that's amazing and that means a lot to me. But also, we're at such a weird place in the world as far as like healing modalities. Like again, no judgment to anybody else, but. I do have a full-time job, so I can be a little bit more giving. And after really sitting with it, I thought about just quitting my Patreon, but ultimately that didn't feel right either. So I feel like this is the move I personally want to make. I hope that makes sense. It feels um, okay. It, of course, anyone who wants to join Patreon, it's still going to be sliding scale. I'm going to be updating all of that soon so that all of it is just the same. You want to support me. That's great. Um, but I think that will also take some pressure off of myself to make sure that I am creating content all the time and instead focus on what is the mission, what do I want to share, and doing monthly circles that you can come to in person and or you can watch the recordings on YouTube or post it on Patreon. Either way, all of that content is going to be available to you, okay? So not much change, really. Just a real shift in exclusivity and barriers to the work. So you can still work with me privately. You can still work with me in different modalities and capacities, but ultimately this feels so much more in alignment to what I want to do with my life and when Jesus comes back, because he's coming back any day now, right? That's what I keep being told, and so I am ready. But with that said, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Um, if you are a Patreon subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It truly does mean so much to me because... I, I, you know, I'm a human being. I need uh, sustenance in life. But at the same time, you do you. If you can't, if it doesn't make sense, don't do it. And that's why I'm kind of at this place where what makes sense for me might not be the most business oriented, but I just don't fucking care anymore. So that's where I'm at. That's, that's the hell I'm dying on. Thank you so much. It is a full moon. <laughs> Or it will be. This is being recorded the day before the moon moves into Aquarius today. Um, but of course, you're watching this probably on the day of. Let's just get into it. This is a reading, a generalized reading for the Aquarian new moon. And of course, Aquarius, we can relate to in the tarot as... Um, the star. I actually have a ritual on my channel around channeling the star and working with the star with art as ritual. I'll link that in the show notes at the end. So if you want to kind of use that uh, ritual to just kind of create that connection with Aquarius, great. That's a great way to start by using tarot as a visual for us to channel with, right? It's also the alien, and I love that. My north node is in Aquarius, so I resonate with the weirdo, the alien, but also the humanitarian, the person who sees things from, 
outside the proverbial box, right? Aquarius comes to us as the second, second to last sign of the zodiac, um, right behind Capricorn. So the last four signs of the wheel of the year are Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and then Pisces ends us, closes us out, right? So we've kind of, when we look at the wheel of the year, Aquarius can kind of be seen as we've, we've gathered some wisdom. And sometimes that is helpful. Sometimes it can actually be seen as baggage. It really depends on how in balance um, the energy of Aquarius is, right? And of course, with Aquarian energy, there is this connection to technology. There's this connection to uh, sharing knowledge in a way, in a way, because technology is another way that we share information. Hence, you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, YouTube in itself feels very Aquarian to me to a certain extent, because there's so much information that's being shared constantly. I love that. Um, with that said, let's dive in. So with this Aquarian energy that we're kind of tapping into, one thing that we might be reflecting on and thinking about is how do we kind of balance it, right? And of course, today I'm using the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot as our reading. Um, but let's let's actually knock knock. Who's there? Me. Um, let's connect with this information real quick or with, with this starting point. What is our medicine card for this full moon? <laughs> Five of swords. I actually really love this. This is kind of perfect with everything I was talking about just a second ago. Five of Swords is the grass is always greener, right? It's also sometimes seen as the comparison card where we might want to just like fight someone. We might be getting frustrated. We might be saying, well, they're more successful than me because we see ourselves here. Or we might say, well, I'm, I'm better at this. Um, it's about know when to hold them, when to fold them, right? And and what really matters, <laughs> which is it's funny for what I just was talking about for my own self. Um, this card comes as a good medicine card around, um, and and with all sorts, this is the case. But really thinking about how the mind can. maybe take more control than it needs to, right? Just just a little bit. When I see swords, I'm usually in just naturally inclined to think about what are my go-to patterns of thought when certain things come up, right? Like, what what is my go-to response? And the five of swords is a great one. Again, when we have fives, we've gotten over a four, which is a respite. So we're kind of reactivating within the journey of this, this uh, suit. But then we're also kind of seeing here that we are being asked to know when we have one in a very literal way or in a proverbial way like oh you walking away is actually you winning it might not feel like it or look like it on the surface but ultimately you're not fixating on something that's not of your your highest good right sometimes holding your tongue 
this big medicine. And that can be a really hard one for all of us, especially me, a Capricorn that's never wrong. So <laughs> there's a lot going on. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Obviously, I'm wrong all the time. But there's this is a card where we see one person is walking away from the situation, maybe even two, depending on your thing, and one person who's maybe feeling really good about their success or their um, domination over the subject. One book that kind of actually comes to mind as I'm looking at this is a book called The, the Death of Expertise. And sometimes how Americans specifically, that book is about how Americans specifically kind of talk about uh, things that maybe they don't know that much about, but feel really strongly about. Um, and so this is very much that theme for me. Stick with Sticking with your own power, knowing that not everyone's going to love you, not everyone's going to accept you, and not everyone's going to love what you have to say. And you don't have to prove that you're right. So that might be a really big lesson for all of us this full moon, is you don't have to prove that you're right. If you're an expert in your field or you know, sometimes just walking away instead of having a pissing contest with strangers on the internet is the key to salvation. Hallelujah, right? Amen. So with this full moon and knowing when we can stand in our power and when we can also walk away in our power, what are we calling in with this full moon? What are we calling in? That was our medicine card, but what are we calling in? Okay. Mom's favorite, judgment. I absolutely love this card. I've talked about this card quite a bit in the past, specifically in connection to Pluto. This is the card of Pluto. And so uh, what we are bringing in is real reflection on what works and what doesn't. And that's probably really connected to this Venus retrograde, right? Like that's that's been the hot topic of everybody's like discussions. Look at that little butt. That is the hot topic that we're kind of like circling around at this point because Venus and all of their perfection is doing the thing that they do best and that is Venus the shit out of everything. Now Venus retrograde is special to me because my Venus is also in retrograde. Yay. But one thing I think is really important in regards to like, what are we calling in? Judgment is not here to tell us like we're supposed to think a certain way or do things a certain way or judge those that don't do it the same as us, but really evaluate, reflect, look at our own selves before casting stones, right? It's easy to look at others and go, you're not living correctly. You're not doing what's right or you need to be doing more. It's much harder to give that judgment back and kind of really assess what's working and what's not. And part of that is we need to listen for our own wisdom, the own our own call. With this being, you know, judgment being connected to rebirth as well, something to think about is maybe what part of your old self are you ready to reclaim again, right? Like what is there something that is in your past that you you want to revisit and go, you know what, I'm not done with you actually. I, I, I need you, right? I need that part of myself that maybe I let go because I was too critical, right? Speaking of letting go, let's close out this, this little reading with what are we letting go for this full moon? We're calling in more self-reflection, more acknowledgement around our own ability to walk away. But what are we letting go of, like consciously? It's something that we can, as a collective, kind of reflect back to. 
We have the strength card. So letting go of strength, what does that mean? That means to me, and of course, as always, the caveat with anything that I share on here is that listen to what the cards say to you because you are your own wisdom. You are your own knower and knowing, right? So strength comes to us showing us a fair person, a soft person, and a, a very scary lion, right? Or we can see this as kind of overcoming our own demons, our own animalistic tendencies, um, maybe just softening within our power and our abilities and allowing ourselves to be calm and resourceful and soft, right? So what does this mean if we're letting this go? I think ultimately this is a reminder that we don't have to fight every battle. Like we act, like going back to this one, we can actually do a lot more instead of like trying to sway someone's heart or mind. We can actually do more by just existing within our own um, value system. We can do more by just simply focusing on ourselves than trying to change the world around us at times. And that I think is something that's important around this full moon is notice what matters to you, right? Like assess, but don't hyper fixate. Things are going to come and go. Um, this is also the card for Leo. As you may or may not know, we are in the height of Leo season. So one thing that we might be asked to let go of today is our ability to charm others. We might just not be able to right now. We don't also have to. We don't have to sit there and try to tame the lion. We can actually just walk away. Um, and, and that can be the greatest medicine of all time for ourselves to just walk away and say, you know what, this is not even worth my energy. I don't need to do this for you. This is late. Like, even though I'm, I'm sweetly sharing my wisdom, that's still my labor and I, I can choose to cut it off whenever. So that can be a really important part of this um, full moon is <sighs> recognizing that not every opportunity to make a point is ever necessary. Like we can just decide no. And that's okay, that's totally fine. Um, that's kind of like freedom, okay? Like really giving ourselves freedom. But what, a, what does that mean? What does that mean though is <clears throat> with this full moon, Acknowledging when to fight and when to walk away is really important. Truth be told, we're probably not going to need to fight a lot. And in fact, walking away is going to be more important than stating our truth or trying to make clear where we stand on everything. That isn't to say that being honest with how you feel is wrong, but it's not the most important thing. In this moment what's really going to matter to us and what really is going to help us understand the medicine of this full moon is doing a lot of self-reflecting and self-assessing what is actually calling to you and what is actually um, maybe you projecting maybe you are wanting someone to get their comeuppance but that's not really the best connection to like actually proving yourself right like that's actually a very flawed place to begin from um and self-serving like maybe what's important is actually finding your own peace and not projecting what your peace looks like to others right like that could be one of those things it can also be um an invitation to look back on what has really helped you in the past grab those things back 
pull maybe old parts of yourself that you said, you know what, I can't indulge in who this is anymore. I can't be the artist. I can't be the writer. I can't be the free spirit, like whatever it is. And, and pull that back out. Pull these identities back in and, and go, you know what? Maybe I can. And with that said, I hope you found this helpful. I hope this is supportive. And of course, thank you so much for being here. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share this with a friend, family member, someone you love, hate, or lust after, maybe not all three. And I will see you next time, friends. Bye-bye.